The summit and its organizers have had understood that implementation is going to be the biggest hurdle for growth in India. If private sector is to deliver the kind of growth that is necessary for India to continue to be prosperous, it needs to implement a number of new reforms that are necessary to unleash the entrepreneurship. It has to be able to take all parts, all sections of the population along with it in order to build its infrastructure. And in this context, it has to build robust institutions for being fair to all those stakeholders involved in creating that infrastructure. So this calls for a certain element of speed and leadership in convincing the people that this has to be done. And all the issues concerning that need to be resolved, like urban infrastructure, education. 41% of 21-year-olds in the world will reside in India for the next 30, 40 years. This population has to be educated and healthy for it to be contributory. It's a big challenge. The list can go on, but infrastructure, some fundamental economic reforms, as well as some structural reforms give teeth to the 73rd, 74th Amendment of the Constitution that will give towns and cities, local self-governments, their own city governments, bringing governance closer to the, to the citizen and therefore making it more accountable. These are some of the important implementation that is lagging behind in India. And I think it is to call attention to this that this summit has really focused on the idea of implementation. A country like India with its large population and a substantial portion of it being poor cannot expect to achieve growth without inclusiveness. And I think private sector has an important role to play, particularly in actually bringing about generation of wealth faster than ordinarily would be expected in another country so that inclusiveness becomes possible. You will find that there is a number of divides in the country. There is a divide of the rich and poor. There is a divide on the issue of digital divide in terms of those who have the knowledge and those who do not. And with all these divides, it becomes very difficult for a country to go forth with the speed that it wishes to, unless it can include those who are on the wrong side of the divide. And from this point of view, private sector can take on one, faster and more rapid growth and greater investment so that more jobs are available. Second is, I think, a certain element of corporate responsibility to ensure that justice is done in all these areas when they employ people and when they look at markets, that the markets, as Professor Prahlad said, are also at the bottom of the pyramid. And I think India can think innovatively, can improvise very well in order to create manufactured goods and services for that market so that it can get included into the economy faster than it would ordinarily have. I think the most important role private sector can play in water management is to first create awareness that water is a more imminent danger to the world than climate change is, and in fact also contributes to the climate change problem. And therefore we need to tackle it urgently. We need to educate not only other members of the private sector, but also members of the government, that it is essential for us to make water and water conservation an important agenda. That whilst water poses a very serious and imminent danger, on the other side, it's a solvable problem by simply using it better by more precision agriculture, using it better by recycling the wastewater, and I think by trying to use as less water as possible, and you will be surprised that when you start practicing it, it's very easy to do. And I think this is what India needs to look at, a complete cost curve of how it can look in cons to conserving water, to restoring the water basins that it is losing very fast, so that water does not become a danger for the country and water security is assured.
Well, disasters happen, both natural disasters, man-made disasters. And what we found very interesting was the engineering construction industry is always there to help at the time of disaster, in all its phases. In the first phase of search and rescue, in the phase of rehabilitation, as well as in the phase when there is nothing happening, but knowledge has to be created to make safe infrastructure, or even if the infrastructure breaks down due to a disaster, how to restore it quickly. This calls for training, this calls for a certain understanding, this calls for pre-arrangement with governments and NGOs. And we as an engineering construction industry have been able to start this process in a more organized manner. HCC has been at the forefront as a founder of the Disaster Resource Partnership. It has also been involved in a number of cases of disaster rescue and, and rehabilitation in Kashmir, in Leh, in Andhra, in, in Chennai, as well as in Bangladesh. We even put together a team of Indian engineers, not just HCC, but from different walks of, of the engineering construction industry and software industry for Katrina to assist in a global effort to make sure wherever big disasters strike, we bring our engineering construction knowledge to bear upon helping people to search and rescue as well as to rehabilitate. Well, I think the global economy has survived the financial crisis, but is still to come out of the economic crisis that has followed. And it may take a few more years for this to actually recover from. India has also survived the financial crisis and in fact actually continues to grow at a very good pace. Having said that, there are several concerns. While on one side the story is good that we survived and continue to grow, there are concerns that since the global environment does not look all that great, can we on our own continue to have this growth rate without the requisite reforms that, that would be necessary in order to be able to deliver the growth rates and increasing growth rates as we go. Most of the growth rate in India is, is due to private sector's initiative. We would like to see a, a greater participation by government in creating purposeful reforms and show purposeful leadership and that would embolden 